we are back again but this is the last week good news I guess uh, last week of the course but we are going to learn some of the very important aspects of calculus one which is called the infinite series which we will have three classes followed by multiple integrals. So, we will start with infinite series. So, infinite series is required at many many places where uh, theoretically you can think of everything been happening in infinite money up to, up to infinite time. So, so, let me write down what is an infinite series. But I am going to just now talk about infinite series of positive terms. Infinite series of positive terms. So, it is written like So, it just goes on it never stops. So, this can be written in a shortcut way as follows summation a and n starts from 1 and goes up to infinity. The symbol infinity does not mean some number of course, infinity is not a number it is a, a symbolism which says that the sum does not stop does not tend it is not a finite sum that is all. Now, is there any meaning to the sum of the infinite series? Sum of the series, how do I even talk about the sum of the series? Okay. Now, let us note something how do I actually approximate this sum? If I take just a 1 then it is extremely crude approximation of the whole sum because there is positive terms so the whole term if if there is something like a sum it must be bigger than all a 1 Then I put a 1 plus a 2 slightly better approximation a 1 plus a 2 plus a 3 slightly better approximation. So, essentially we are creating an increasing sequence. So, if I will take a S1 is equal to A1, S2 is equal to A1, and Sn An, and goes on. So Sn, this term, so I formed a sequence. So this is called a sequence of partial sums. So, if I look at this series because these are positive terms S 2 is bigger than S 1, S 1 is bigger than S 2, S 3 is bigger than S 2 and so on and so forth. So, basically it is like this S 1 is smaller than S 2 So, basically what is happening S n is smaller than S n plus 1. So, it is a increasing series or non decreasing rather I should say. But actually it is a strictly increasing series because if these are all positive terms then we are strictly increasing ok just. So, now if this series is bounded above if S n is bounded above above then S n converges to L is equal to supremum of the sequence S n. So, what we were telling is that now if S n goes to L where L should be the supremum and S n will go to L because if S n is, is because S n is bounded above if S n is bounded above then we define this L as the sum of the series essentially some people want to call it a limiting sum also does not matter it is a limiting sum if you say in some sense, but this is the sum of the series this is what is defined as the sum of the series and we have to keep that in mind we have to be very careful about that. So, when 
there is a sum or the sequence of partial sums converge. Of course, if the sequence of partial sums are bounded above, they will converge. So, if the C and if the if this thing whole thing converges, then the sequence of partial sum must be bounded above. The sequence of if the sequence of partial sum converges, and if there is a sum of the series, then he says that the series converges. If S n converges, we say that Now, it is very important to know how do I test whether a sequence, you, you know every time you are not going to write down partial sums, right. So, if you are not going to write down so the sum of uh, take the partial sums and then try to find the convergence, it is always not a good idea. There should be some easy way to figure out whether a sequence is convergent or divergent. One of the, so if, SN, if the sequence does not converge, means either S n is oscillating or S n is uh, going to infinity. In both cases, we said that the sequence when the sum a n does not converge, this does not have a sum or it diverges. So, it is important to now understand that there must be some ways to easily determine whether this sum a n has a is has a this summation a n has a sum or not or whether it converges or not. So, first one of the easiest test is called the comparison test. This comparison test only is working for series of positive terms, it cannot work for other things or series of non-negative terms if you want to say. So, if for some n not element of n, we have a n less than equal to b n for all n bigger than equal to n naught and summation b n converges, then summation a n converges. So, it does not matter if you have left out finite number of terms, if the remaining part converges you can add the sum of the finite number of terms and you can have the total sum. Now, for example, consider this famous geometric series. Geometric series is something which you have already uh, seen in high school. So, so you can understand that S n here must be less than 2, it does not matter, S n should be always strictly less than 2 for all n. So, here S n is always less than 2. So, you see immediately you have, you see in this very simple case S n the sequence is bounded above and so you can immediately say it converges. Of course, I leave it to you to decide that whether you, you but this for example, this one can be used as a se se sequence B n to show something else is convergent. A second one is the following, if same thing, if for some n not element of n, we have a n greater than equal to b n for all n bigger than n not and summation b n diverges. then so does a n. See, we will uh, now give a proof, you, you, we will use this for example, we will use this idea to prove that if I will show, I mean, we will show that the harmonic series which is consisting of the following terms 1 plus half plus one third plus one fourth. There is a sequence one by n. So is one by n. 
Now, we will use this comparison test the second thing to show that this actually diverges. See what we can do is the following, we simply have to regroup this as follows 1 plus half plus 1 third plus 1 fourth plus 1 fifth plus 1 sixth plus 1 seventh plus 1 eighth. So, you group up to 4 and the n group is n group here is up to 2 cube here is 2 to the power 1 here the n group is up to 2 square the n group is up to 2 cube then n group is up to 2 to the power 4 that is 1 by 9 plus 1 by 10 plus so if you look at this what does this become so this is become bigger than 1 plus half plus you see one third is bigger than one fourth, so it is one fourth plus one fourth half. So one fifth is bigger than one eight, one sixth is bigger than one eight, one seventh is bigger than one eight. This is one eight. So four times one eight is again half. This whole thing is greater than half. And similarly, this is also bigger than half. So, this sequence 1 plus half plus half plus half plus half this sequence diverges because uh, the sum of partial sums is not bounded above. As a result of which we have a divergence series which is B n here and my series was A n here. You see that from this term there is a strict this B n is strictly less than the terms these terms. So, basically immediately you see I have a sequence B n and this B n is converging. So, by this comparison methodology, so I basically regrouped basically I have written okay instead of writing this sequence I am writing this sequence I am writing this sum. So, I am telling that now what I am telling that this is the sequence. Now 1 the next sequence is next term is these are series. So, first each term is 1 then the term is half then term is 1 third plus 1 fourth this. So, each term so this is one term this is one term this is one term of the rearrangement series. Here rearrangement does not make a difference because these are all positive terms. So, here you see this term is bigger than half this term is bigger than half this term is bigger than half so and so you have a sequence and which is showing that this sequence is convergent by the divergent and this actually should be equal to this sequence. So, this sequence itself is also divergent. So, that is an a little application of those ideas. There is something called integral test which I do not want to explain to you because that would get get you into some sort of uh, more detailed things. There are several uh, comparison tests which comes one is called the limit comparison test. So, again it is only for sequence of series of partial terms. If you have limit of a n by b n equal to c n tends to infinity and c is strictly bigger than 0, then summation a n and summation b n converge and diverge together. Number 2, if limit n tends to infinity a n by b n is equal to 0 and if summation b n converges then a n is then summation a n converges. So, you can use the limit comparison test. Right, you given given a series, you can construct another series B n and do the ratios A n by B n, right. If limit A n by B n tends to infinity is equal to 
plus infinity, then if summation b n diverges, then summation a n also diverge. Now, now, let us take an example. The example is like this that you are considering the following series. So, each term, so if, if I put n equal to 1, it is 3 by 4, then the second term is 5 by 9 and so on and so forth. So, it is 3 by 4 plus 5 by 9 plus 7 by 16 plus, it does not seem on the very look of it that it might converge. So, let us if I have, have having by looking at it, if I am having some doubt, then I can easily consider this test to try out the limit comparison test. So, what should be the let me take b n. So, if a n is equal to 2 n plus 1 by n square plus 2 n plus 1, let me because I want to check out divergence because I because it looks like that it will just go, go up, blow up then let me take b n is equal to 1 by n. So, b n is actually summation b n is the harmonic series which we have just saw to be divergent. So, then what happens? Because what happens you see that if you have why, why I am suspecting this just observe the following for n very large n square will dominate 2 n plus 1. So, it is something like 2 n by n square. So, it is almost like this. So, because of this you have a suspicion that it might convert. So, now let us do this a n by b n. So, 1 by n a n is 1 by n. So, n will go to the top. So, it will become 2 n square plus n by n square plus 2 n plus 1. So, you divide by n, here you divide by n. So, it will become 1 by n, here it will become, so you divide by n, it, oh sorry divide by n square, then it will become 1 by n, then this sorry limit n tends to infinity, limit n tends to infinity, then it will become 1 plus 2 by n plus 1 by n square. So, the limit actually gives me 2. So, the limit is c which is strictly bigger than 0. So, which means a n and b n both diverge and converge together, but summation b n already diverges. So, we can now conclude that a n diverges. So, we end the very simple te test procedures here. Uh, we will uh, come to our other test, uh, how to do some important tests like the ratio test and the root test in the next uh, lecture. So, we will talk about root test and ratio test in the next lecture, give you some idea of a series which is not formed of just positive terms as a plus minus alternating sign. That is very basic idea we will give and then in the last one we will talk about power series and largely the power series generated by the Taylor series rather than the Maclaurin series. Thank you very much.